station. SLR is here just for you. Your community radio station. Yes, welcome to the 100% Spa Show on slrradio.co.uk. So I'm just going to have a track. Our, our featured artist today is Eternal. And uh, we're going to have a track from Eternal. And after that, we will have Jammers talking about, about his book. Um, his book, um, Etymology um, is the Roots of Words, the origin of Script. And it's a magnificent looking book for Pharaoh on the top. And it seems to be a revision of history because one of the Pharaohs are now called DS Jammers. <laughs> But tonight we've got quite an interesting lineup tonight for you. Uh, we've got uh, Jammers in the studio. Um, it's always um, always an interesting show when Jammers is in the studio. They always bring a different, uh, <laughs> they always bring a different flavour um, to the studio and to his interviews. Because he's uh, always words of wisdom. You know, he specialises in words, and he's wrote a couple of books. And uh, um, his latest one is Etymology, Etymology, The Roots of Words. It's a new edition, and uh, he will be talking about that. I've also got in the studio uh, one of our contributors, regular contributors, and we got Theo, is also in the studio. Uh, but before we uh, uh, get into all of the lineup, just want to tell you what the show is about. Uh, we are kind of a magazine show. We we talk about love, we talk about romance, we talk about spirituality, and also look at topical issues uh, that affects uh, the community. And from time to time, we do invite the people in the studio uh, um, of um, South Africa. So I don't know what Jamit is doing here. Yeah, so I've got about the hot seat. Yeah, no, so I don't know what I'm doing there still. Yeah, definitely. We, we normally invite people who think that's going to have something worth a contribution to make an you know, egg night. Yeah, what am I doing there? That's what. You tag absolutely, yeah. But um, you're invited and you're in the hot seat, and uh, and we're definitely going to be having an interesting show. And then we, we play a little bit of music in between. We, our featured artist today is Eternal, that British band that did quite well. And I thought that in the 90s, I thought they should have been still doing well. And but they're not um, big. But that but that's our featured our features featured artist for today is the group um, Eternal. I'm just gonna. SLR is here just for you, your community radio station. To the 100% Spa Show on slrradio.co.uk with Star and Buzzing B. The show is every Monday from 7 to 9 pm and it's for you and you. Aims and objectives we cover our love and romance, home, health, finance, fitness, how your friends, your rest, your relaxation, and tell us, what are you doing with your money? You can join the debate on 07-984-931-588, or text us on 07-984-931-588, or email us, sparshow100 at gmail.com. 100% Spa Show, slrradio.co.uk. Got studio guest, um, Jammers. Well, he'll be talking about his book in about eight o'clock. But I, I'm just, just going to get some of what what he has to say on on, the, on this particular situation. Also, I'm going to bring Theo in. So, well, if you want to join the conversation, zero seven nine eight four nine three one five double eight. Now, who am I going to? Get to respond first. Is it gonna? It looks like Theo. Theo they're, they're both pointing at each other. <laughs> no, no one wants to. Um, <laughs> no one wants to be the first, you know. See, but Jamal, I'm, I'm just going to pull you in there so since you're the closest to me to see what's your, what is your thinking on this? You, you've heard now that the the, the homes um, secretary, the minister in the Home Office, uh, uh, Mrs. Sarah Newton is saying that uh, the, 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 that the, um, accusations or, 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 or uh, being afraid of being accused of accusations of racism should not stop uh, um, you know, the police um, from, from carrying out their job and their duties in terms of you know, because it seems as though they're going to be ramping up this again, the stop and search. Because uh, Dick seems to think that is a good tool. So, you know, the, um, when Theresa May was home office, she scaled it down, uh, and they said it was a rise in, in knife crime. Now, uh, the new the thing that she, Mrs. Newton is saying that 
should be it's a good tool and that uh, you know that they're going to carry it out it has caused a lot of angst um, uh, um, in the black and in other communities um, but they're saying that there's no difference in the statistics um, in terms of uh, of the disproportionality of people being stopped so it doesn't really exist and that is a, it's a quite effective tool and, 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 and you know so but what is your take on it? Well, I'll, um, like, uh, thank you for having me once again, uh, all the SLR family. Um, I'd just like to say race equals black mixed race or Asian. The racist laws, the race laws are play in place to protect black people, mixed race people and Asians against racist behavior. So, well, her statement is she's repealing the race laws and that means we as a community have no protection against um, racism in the force. So what happens in the case like in um, it's still Newington when, when a, 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 a youth is killed by the police, that means they don't have to answer any allegations against a racist behavior. So it's encouraging, the funny is that it's funny, it's simultaneous is what's happening in America that the racist laws now, um, uh, it seems like they're being repealed. And then what, what statistics? Where are the statistics? This seems like junk science because you can make statistics um, go in your favour in any, in any shape, how you, how you want to manipulate the statistics. So what statistics is this? Uh, where's the proof of the statistics to say that this uh, th th there shouldn't be no race protection against racist police or racism in the force? So that's my take on it really because basically it's just giving them like a 007 licence against black people now to do wh whatever they wish and it seems like like, you know, it's, it's a lawless society that we're entering now. Yeah, so, so the, 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 that is very, um, you know, um, a pretty good um, point that, um, that, that, that you've raised. Yeah, that you've raised, Jammers, and, and that is very interesting there. And Theo, what is your take on it? Right, um, well, first of all, I'd say good uh, evening to you, Buzzing B. How are you doing, Jammers, uh, and all everyone outside um, who's listening in? Now, um, when I read all of this, um, as I was reading it, I, I was very interested in, in in one particular section of the of the of the um, article in which um, it stated that there is this um, equal equal success rate between um, blacks and whites under this whole system and I thought it was it was quite it was quite a work of art the way it's actually been put across because it actually what it tries to do is to is to imply that the the success rates between uh, as a result of these stops and searches is, is equally matched by the incidence of stoppages in the first place so um, I mean it's kind of like an assumption that that people don't have any kind of knowledge of how ratios work and so it comes across to me as though well it would be a case of that <sighs> this is really distracting yeah so there's a case of um a higher proportion of stoppages in order to bring the whole success rate in, in terms of like into into um kind of into line so it, in other words what i'm saying is you have to target more in order to bring the in order to bring the numbers up in line with the amount of white stoppages that actually result in successful convictions as it were um, and it's also it's also kind of like running a very tired kind of narrative that the police are kind of like victims now so you know boohoo we're being accused of racism just for doing our job kind of thing so I'm not really too impressed with that whole idea you see though to this this kind of thing where, where there's this idea of a disfigured perception of how the police are and they're just trying to do their job and working within the guidelines and as as Jamas was saying you know it's it's actually like I said it's, it's, a, remo it's a removal of any kind of protection for those communities who feel hard done by an, an overly overly represented within these kind of powers that the police want to enforce although I would argue really that you know, there's not really been any kind of substantial protection within those communities to begin with. So, and, and the whole thing about, well, the whole idea of it's racist to police those who are considered to be a race, and of course whites don't consider themselves to be one in the first place, it's just something everybody else is. So, 
Um, that's my first. That's my first thoughts on the whole issue. I mean, it, like I said, I'll just reiterate: it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an attempt to say that you know, there's the figures are equally matched, and that there is no real excessive targeting of of blacks and other non-white people. And you know, because I don't really buy into this idea of people of color, but that whole idea is what they're trying to put across and it's obviously you know we need to step up that's them they're speaking that they need to step up and enforce these laws and feel no apparent fear when you have power i'm, I'm trying to kind of get my rat my head around this idea that the people in power are actually f- fearful of using their power i've never really seen that any kind of manifestation of that before up until now so i'm not quite sure what that's trying to what they're trying to say when they're saying that but um those would be my um my initial thoughts on the whole thing really it's a very very beautifully put in a way that really disguises the intent behind all of this and you know um yeah that's that's kind of like how i see it i mean it's a, it's very much linguistic sleight of hand going on and but you know obviously i'd like to think that a lot of us are actually wise to the way they like to kind of like couch it in these very ambiguous terms in order to try and justify more action that they want to take in order to clear more people who have done no real young doing out of the danger of the communities they actually are serving and those are the ones that are moving into neighborhoods where they previously were never there and that throws up another issue as well so um that's my first thoughts on that uh, as as of now yeah um th- th- that's some good um pretty good um yeah um yeah th- that's some uh, pretty good response there theo um s- s- summing up you know uh, some of what you you feel uh, or, or that that the police uh, that the home office minister don't you seem to be suggesting don't um have uh, a case uh in that sense and you 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 certainly seem to disagree with the idea that the proportionality does not um exist it'd be quite interesting to see um how they they they, they, they come to their figures uh in that in that in that in that regard um because they're saying that that disproportionality doesn't exist suppose did they change if you change the method you probably would get the result you want so it, it would no longer be seen as disproportionality because you changed the method and it's to work could before it probably would have been proportionally so if you if you assign the proportionally then in terms of the uh, other numbers then uh, it would seem that because that the that blacks or that, that black people are all a smaller minority it, it might look as though that they've been they've been stopped more because of because the population is quite is smaller as opposed to if you if you take it numerically in terms of because obviously there are more white people in the country so if you had to do it numerically like that then it would reflect that that they are being stopped more because it's more of them but obviously the, the, the statistics is done different because we are a smaller minority then it, it will in proportion to our population then that's the way that i suppose that they would measure the, the disproportionality uh, in that sense so perhaps they have changed the methodology in the way in the which they don't know in, in, in the way they measure uh, this uh, um, this open search now so now now it seems that they're suggesting that is that there is no difference that yeah. seems to be the argument being made now that is kind of the argument they're trying to make I mean I'm, I'm not like I said it's, it's like what you said it would be interesting to see how they go about you know Um, accumulating this data and what it's supposed to reflect Um, like I said the 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 wording that I'm seeing in the article is is misleading very much misleading but then of course that's the nature of that's the nature of how the language works and Jammers is going to help us out with all of that I mean of course he will (laughs) of course he is I mean (laughs) You know, I was I was saying to someone in in a, in a in a discussion I was having, and it was really quite it was quite nice to see Jamas in his presentation the other day back that whole thing up because I just I was rather more long winded in my my assessment of of English in particular being a language that um, is is custom designed 
to include dimensions for ambiguity and deceit. Yeah, we, we and, th- and then of course Jamas followed that up the other day by saying, yeah, it's actually officially recognised as an equivocal language. So when you're using, anytime you're using these kind of this language, and you're operating from a position of power, you're defining the ideas and your reality to other people to accept and absorb and then obviously if you're not really careful and you're not discerning you can fall into all kinds of mishap as a result of that and this is the kind of thing where those those processes begin to shape ideas and change perception you know this is actually attempt at disfiguring perception rather than them ex- their, their, their claim that they're on the wrong end of of a kind of unfair perception of them. Well, well, well. Now the the uh, the police officers no longer need to feel uh, uh, that they're being, uh, uh, you know, in terms of being accused uh, of racism, because it's about don't fear the allegations um, of racism anymore. So that they should be free to carry out their jobs in terms of uh, this policy of stop and search because we see that they think it is a useful tool and um, and has been uh, um, the I mean it's caused a lot of controversy uh, um, um, you know but but they're saying that it, it is it, it is uh, can be very effective too so now the, some people might say well, the gloves are off now so police now would feel much more uh, empowered or much more enthused I suppose um, to carry out the uh, uh, and the job of stopping shows without worrying about being accused of, of racism or anything like that to be more emboldened and did you think that that, that argues well for, for community relations um, jammers well I think you're going back to the word terminology of race it, it was a rubbish law in the first place anyway because right. it's not it's, clear, it's based on a a colour, colour in law means an appearance. So it's fa- it's a false, it's a false um, law that they put in to try to just appease us as a community to, to pretend that they are actually have any consideration for us. But really, when it comes to the crunch, they would just throw it away as as a whim, you know. And we're just left at their mercy, as you say. Now racism, they're really legalising racism by by these comments. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it does now put, I don't know, in terms of, of how community leaders, uh, you know, are going to respond uh, to this particular situation now where uh, the, the, the Home Office Minister, um, Sir Newton, is now saying that, uh, you know, you know, trying to, you know, to, 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 to give to rest that, that the idea that, that, that even stop and search in itself um, um, is a racist tool or, or, or is used to target uh, specific uh, um, communities. And as Theo said, I think that they're, they're kind of a change in the language or the method because they're also suggesting that the, the statistics now, statistically, it's, it's no difference now, just as much black or white is top in proportion um, to their numbers. So I think that is the, the, I think maybe that's what they're using to say now that, yes, lots of white get stopped in proportion to their numbers. So where is, the, 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 you know, like for like, where is the disproportionality in that sense? So, yeah. Well, as I said, uh, statistics is junk science, which is where you can make, I agree. you can manipulate the statistics. Which statistics? Where are the statistics? Who did they ask? You know, what's the criteria? It's junk science just to yeah. put forward, a, you know, their racial view. Yeah, but really. I, yeah I think criteria and uh, methodology is very important. Um, that would give you the that would give you the result that you want. So, you know, whatever we say, the gloves are off, and they've been told don't fear racism allegations when you use stop and search. The police are told so. Different psychology now um, being put in place now, so that they will walk out there tomorrow feeling quite emboldened and uh, to carry out the stop and search. But as a matter of fact, I think um, Christina Dix said some some weeks ago she's going to step it up. Uh, um, a little bit because it's effective and she she's sure that that communities um, will have her support she's quite confident of that and I think whether or not you know is a fair comment or not fair it seems a bit uh, it seems a bit uh, ominous that it's in synchronization with what's happening in the United States yes you know? the, the and the, the term um is it a terrible thing in, in Virginia where the, the white supremacists are, are, are having their march uh, because they're going to remove a statue of a person who who has uh, um, tolerated um, racism and lynching and and, uh, and, and one person will kill in the process? 
as well. So it, it seems quite um, interesting times, uh, or some people might say just a continuation of what, what has changed uh, um, in, in that sense. So, but tonight we were looking at that, that the police no longer need to fare racism. If you want to, to have your two pennies say 07984 um, 931 So think, don't fear racism allegations when you're told to stop and search the police are told by, by the Home Office Minister, Ms. Sarah Newton. Is she right or is she or is she barking up the wrong tree? Is she stirring up trouble here? And when he says two penny, he doesn't really mean two penny because he, he really values your comments. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I've got to choose my word very, very carefully <laughs> um, with, with Jamaj here in the studio. Um, I, yes, definitely what I meant is, is your, your contribution because your, your contributions are very valuable, if not invaluable, and not literally two pennies <laughs> worth, <laughs> I must say. So, yes, you can join the conversation um, this evening, 07984 one five double eight. This evening we have Jamuj um, in the studio, and we also have Theo, a uh, regular contributor to the show. So we're going to be, uh, you, we're going to be, it's, you can mull over what, what you've heard so far, but we're going to um, just going to get a track going after the track. Uh, I'll be having Jamuj. This is where the whale fun begins. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, should I? Uh, he's he's been, gonna, 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 gonna for me now. We'll just be no. warming up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to have a track. Our, our featured artist today is Eternal, and uh, we're going to have a track from Eternal. And after that, we will have Jamuj talking about, about his book, um, his book, um, etymology. Um, it's the roots of words, the origin of script. And it's a magnificent looking book for Pharaoh on the top. And there seems to be a revision of history because one of the Pharaohs are now called DS Jammers. Uh, I, 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 I can, can I leave now? <laughs> can I leave now? I, I, I've got the evidence here. Uh, I've got the evidence here. <laughs> Right, and I've got the evidence here because uh, this, show, this, show, this show is being filmed, um, so I'm just putting the evidence there that, that one of the fairies um, is now uh, called DS Jammers, but we shall be talking about that after the track, so do join us um, after, after the break, don't touch the dial. Yes, welcome back to the 100% Spa Show with Buzzin B and Star. And tonight we have in the studio Jammers. We've got Jammers uh, in the studio, and uh, and Theo as well. Uh, and uh, and we were and we were talking about uh, uh, our topic. We had a topic tonight. We were talking about um, it's um, don't fear allegations of racism uh, when stopping and searching. And and so you know, and we we did cover uh, we did cover some we did cover some angles and different angles. Also, Theo brought up the language perspective, and we have the language man in the studio, Mr. Jammers. Uh, he's done some books uh, on language, and uh, and like I said before the break, uh, one of the um, Pharaohs is now called D.S. Chambers and uh, <laughs> so I've got a, a historical figure in the studio with me here this evening and I'm pretty much honoured <laughs> uh, to be to be uh, to be in his presence so we're just gonna since you talking about um, we're just going to build a subject around your book in terms of even the the issue that we're talking about the, the the allegations of racism uh, and, and the police no longer um, should fare um, about being accused um, of it. And also changing uh, the, the perception uh, in terms that, the, the, that disproportionality is no longer uh, uh, um, really uh, um, happening in terms of stop and search and the way that it affects uh, black and ethnic minorities. That also seems to be not only a change in methodology uh, um, and criteria, but also uh, a change in language. 
So th- 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 this seems to be all tied up in the language situation, Jammers. Yeah, well, one of the biggest crimes that's been committed against us as a people um, is that basically the Western man has actually with his teeth our language from us he's stolen our whole language he's stolen the language from us he's stolen the creation of the language he's stolen the world he's, st- he's stolen the- he's stolen he's stolen the words he's stolen the- it's not there's no such thing as an alphabet it's an afrobit so they've stolen all the language even they're not even europeans we are europeans because it comes from the europa which is a phoenician uh, a phoenician goddess in, in in mythology so they've even stolen the identity from us they have no identity basically they, they don't the aliens on this on this environment they're not native of in this english in English sphere of the world that we're living in, so they've hijacked the language and they've given us all the disparating words to use. Mm. So, uh, uh, so in, in other words, we we, we are we uh, we are being misled, and, and what we're being told um, is is total distortion. Yeah, misled, miseducated, uh, misdirected. You know, we've been misinterpreted, mismanaged. You know, mouth, and that's why we're we're we're, we're, we're put up of the t- of the system that's put us in this in this state of being. You know, for instance, mm-hmm. the, as we said, the word race and and the the the, 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 the names black is and color. Color means right. an appear it means false means an appearance. You know, right. so the color of law is an appearance. So we're, we're talking us as a color. They're, they're saying we don't really exist, and everything, it's just property. We just looked at it as property. So basically, the words that they've been they're using for us is not as a race of people. It's it's there's any shade of colour or you know a, 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 a insignificant part of who we really are. So 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 is there an argument to be made that we shouldn't perhaps use the 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 colour black? So is there a case against that and blackness per se? Uh, um, if, if you were saying that, did, did, just to borrow um, a, a phrase um, from Theo, is it a case against black? Then you know, blackness, Theo. Do you want to come in there? We were sitting in the language thing. He looks, Theo looks quite stunned. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 the question. <laughs> so, do you uh, want to come in there, Theo? Well, can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Hello. Okay. All right. Okay. I was not going to. Trying to get out of it. Really. He, 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 he's pretending he couldn't. No. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's that whole idea. That whole idea. Sorry about that, Jams. Is is in is in line with just everything that as Jams was speaking there. It did it did bring some thoughts to mind of my own about the whole um, idea around this identity of what we call you know blackness and it it does it does kind of fall short in terms of being a real functional identity as a, per se and then that is pretty much in line with the, with the comments just which is preceding comments just thus far um i'd follow that up by saying that it is in fact a more or less reiterating jammers to a certain extent in that when we think about blackness and, and the focus tends to be around that whole appearance aspect of blackness and then in that respect it functions less as an identity and more as a response mm. to an experience which is mistakenly evaluated to come about as a result of being black mm. when the experience is not necessarily because you're black but because you're not white and now that may sound like just messing around with words and it being six or one and a half or doesn't the other but then it's something that really needs to be extensively contemplated to a certain extent but yes there is I mean in, in the short answer is there a case against it well I would say yeah there is, there is. right so where does that because we, we use it as a, a, as a, a political description of ourselves and, and it seems to appear in almost uh, 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 lots of literature in terms of politics. So you have the Black Lawyers Association. You've got Operation Black Vote, and and, and then there are lots of uh, other groups of people who, who identify under the term as well. So it, it does, um, you know, it kind of a, 
does it throw the the, 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 the African side of things out of sync, uh, Jammers? It throws it completely out of the diaspora, you know. So basically, you know, this is a changing paradox. We have to, I said, when you know the truth, the truth is going to set you free. You know, not a collar is going to set you free, but the truth. And the truth is, if you look at the word literacy, which means which means letters or the alphabet, you look at the Latin term, which is litera. The word lit means to quarrel and the word tira is terrain so basically language is designed to quarrel over land possession and identity so we have to wake up to the fact that these this is this is what the words are used for they used to take our land take our possession take our identity and when you're calling someone the word black it doesn't associate to an area of land so immediately by using that word it just associates to a color color is an appearance it takes the land requirement out of the equation and we are fighting for a color which we already have and losing our land and wealth in the process mm. so so in this case, you don't think that we should be applying the word to ourselves? Is that the argument you're making? Or are you in Teo's corner in terms of the case against it? Uh, I'm going to side check that and f let it hit Theo. <laughs> that comment. The, the case to Theo seems to be... <laughs> <laughs> he's going to fact check and science check you, Theo. Uh, um, because you, you, I know that you've got um, some... Um, interesting argument building against, uh, uh, you know, in terms of, of this black and a case against it, because you see it as as an experience rather than than actually a, a, a political or, or physical description in terms of identity of ourselves, and, and, and one that should be repudiated if not rejected. <laughs> That's some strong. <laughs> that is some strong words there. That is some seriously strong words you got there. Um, now, a lot of people. As you said, they mm. use it. There's yeah. all these very much groups and the, and, and really it's, it's about... But then it comes back down to the same thing. It comes down to responding to an idea. Mm. You're responding to an idea. Mm -hmm. You haven't actually really chosen that for yourself. Right. You know, you've, you've, been, you've come into contact with the values, the ideas, the behaviours of another group of people who have then imposed the idea on you that you are this you know there hasn't really been any thoroughgoing interrogation as to okay who the hell are we to begin with and why are we actually accepting this mm. you know mm. the black is a white creation right so when you're so whether you're called your group the you know the black the lawyer society whatever you are still in part making a response to it so then that means any effort you're making to reevaluate, to right. re-leverage the actual mm -hmm. power quotient in terms of ourselves and the others you're still working within as Jama said you're working with another person's paradigm right. you haven't escaped that boundary yet mm -hmm. because you're still working and using the terminology that someone else has said here this is for you to use yes but they've made the rules up you see it's like they've created a maze or something or a conundrum for you and once you solve one part of it they add, another, they, they add another corridor that you all, that wasn't there before mm -hmm. and then you have to go down there and you're constantly trying to chase you're constantly trying to prove that I'm this you're constantly trying to prove that it's always being distracted away from what might actually be a more necessary kind of goal mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean which is more or less to form more kind of functioning systems actually work for the group mobility of your people rather than actually trying to work around a, a nebulous amorphous type of identity which really doesn't actually fundamentally speak to who you actually are hmm. so so getting back to just want to bring it around to language again um Jammer, since you uh, you know, the, the, the person who is, I think, pretty equipped uh, um, to answer these questions. So don't be, don't, don't look puzzled or think if I throw the, most of the questions at you, because that's why you are sitting in the hot seat. I thought I was there for like cheese and bread and... Uh, no, 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 we, we don't do, we serve porridge here, we serve it very cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, but w w what I was wanted to, to, to bring back to was the back to the story uh, th that we were dealing with at the top of the show uh, in terms of the, the the racism issue and because you're talking about words 
uh, and perception is when different groups of people hear these words, does it mean different things to these people or, or do you have a different take on that? Because obviously from the police perspective, perhaps what they're doing is not necessarily, might not be racism because it's, 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 it's part of the procedure, the process of stopping and searching someone or a group of people who, who, who are they see are, are disproportionately, that word, affected by, 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 by knife and gun crime. And in, in, in their view, they would say, well, this is a vehicle which we think have some bearing or some effect in, in changing that situation. So isn't it a case of two different communities, so to speak, the police community and the other communities having different perception about this word? Well, I think if, if it was in the context of like knife crime, but it, it, it wasn't made in that context. Right. It's just made, made in the case of racism. So the person with power says the word, and right. the person who has no power has to take the consequences of the word. So that's that's basically what it was. If you look at the word crown, you see the last three letters of the word crown is own. So when you can cry something and you you own it, that means you have the you have the power to define somebody else's reality just by the words that you use. And and this is another case of them imposing power. You know, they they give you with one hand and then take t double back with the other hand. You know, so that's another case of that. Well, so 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 you're saying that those who are uh, affected by the word which is racism they're the ones that should have the power uh, um, to define when it exists and when it doesn't exist well we as I said we have to create our own uh, ha we have to create our own um, uh, uh, our own laws basically because basically when people are giving us these words it's what it means to them there's another implication of what it means to us so we have to come with our own our own analysis of how these words affect us and, and start to dictate what the words are meaning to us and, and we have to have a common understanding that most of these words are detrimental to our psyche. It's just like giving someone a Ferrari and, and making them focus on the colour of the Ferrari. They never get to learn about the mechanics of the car, or how to drive the car. You know, they're, they're not going to want ownership. It's time for us to take ownership. Rather than becoming preoccupied with um, with, with what they are giving us in the way that in, in the way that that we should use the word. I think we we are having a caller here. Uh, good evening, 100% Spar Show. Good evening. Good evening. Seems to be having a... All right, let's can hold on. Good evening. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, good, I can hear you. Good evening. Okay, this is better. Yes, I can hear you. You sound very muffled, though. You... Yeah, this phone already was some dumb problem. But I, um, this better talk you speaking. Yeah, okay, Burger Dougie, go ahead. Yes, Dougie, how are you doing? Yeah, first we're going to do big dance for a few minutes. Big dance for a few minutes. Yeah, and everybody, you know. Um, part of the reason they big up to the um the spa show. Oh, but I just want to ask Jamal's uh, uh well it's a really question in terms of um <clears throat> in the future will we be running um classes in terms of looking at things about words and if a major roots of words etc. So it's a simple question about will it be running um classes in the very near future because you know it's from we hear stories from rags to riches you know so. <laughs> so that's because I wonder about uh, yeah, the, uh, the classes and also where you can get his book from as well. Yeah, okay, yes, Dougie. Uh, I had a little discussion with you. Yes, we will be running classes, and James doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be sort of setting out the, the structure of the lessons. <laughs> <laughs> And Fia is going to be helpful. So th this is a this is a must. We have to start. You know, it's our time now to shine. So we have to start um, putting together a, a format where we can rise. And as I said, it, but once you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So it's a time of change, and it's going to be happening right now. Yeah. Oh, also the book. You can text um, me on zero seven four nine seven zero six nine seven zero two. Once again. 07497 and, and, and just text uh, Buzzy B for your discount and uh, your name and you can get a copy of the book. Absolutely so. Um, yes, Dougie, uh, have you got any, any more um, thoughts to share on, on, on what you've heard so far? Where's the Dougie? 
think we've I think we've lost him. Yeah, but, but yeah, but Doug, but Doug was asking was asking yourself if uh, you know you the, yeah, you'd yeah. be doing some classes People there, and, and I noticed that. that you that you wrote me in um, into the studio. Yeah, and let's have I think we have Brother Dougie on the line again. Yes, Brother Dougie. Yes, sorry. Um, I did come up with the, the line. You know what I mean? Okay. We have no more questions. Um, it's just really to find out more about the um the workshops. Okay. And what you're doing. And right. also, um, yourself, Buzzy B. Will there be any more events you'll be um, putting on? I know you put some at the um, is it Hornsey Library? Oh yeah, we 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 will be having um, even in terms of the Speak Out London live, we, we will be having um, more. We had one on the last Thursday, but the next one is going to be the 31st of September, and it's going to be at the Marcus Garvey Library. We will be interviewing former boxer Michael Watson. What what that sorry what date would that be? This is going to be the 30th of September. The 30th of September. Okay. And we, we shall be interviewing um, Michael Watson, the, the, the former boxer. Michael Watson, is that That's there? right. Yes, that's right. Okay, fantastic. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we shall be. Um, so, but we'll give, we will be giving you up to date uh, on that one. Okay, fantastic. Oh, okay, brilliant. Anyway, um, I don't want to hang up the, um, the line, you know what I mean? But um, it's really good to hear um jammers and the yeah, rest of the brothers them and the system and reason and, and so forth you know? yeah it's yes. really been um enlightening you know yes yeah so uh, um yeah so it's just to know more um jams is on progress you know yes. I mean? okay yes yeah thank you brother yeah thank you brother dougie no problem no problem yes that was brother, brother dougie there um you know, talking to you about yeah, the respect for Dougie is a is a is a work he's a fan, you know. Absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, we were different. Once again, we'll be having lessons to stick uh, stick in tune with James because he will be actually structuring the actual courses etymology, you know, uh, the roots of words, <laughs> and uh, also a lot with Dougie yourself. So basically, yeah, we've been having I've been getting so many people answer me about this, so we will be putting together lessons. So once again, the number is zero seven four nine seven zero six nine seven zero two, and that's for a copy of the book on entomology once again 07497069702 and uh, just text Buzzy B and your name for yeah, a discount uh, you just mention my name and you'll get I think he said you're going to get a discount or something like that um, so discount. my name seems to be worth two pennies <laughs> 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 so I'll get you back on that one um, yeah so we, we're talking uh, uh, um, entomology ep- ep- tonight um, we've got Jammers in the studio. He's written books on language, and we also have Theo uh, contributing to the uh, to the show the, uh, this this evening. Now, back to this book you've written on, on etymology, uh, which uh, the roots of words and the origins of words. I know that you've written a previous book before, and you decided to with it decoding language. Yeah, the, the previous book to this was a decoding, with decoding language, language. And, and, right. you, and then you decided to, to follow with this. Why do you think it was necessary to follow with this one? Well, I think the first two were pretty controversial, you know, and uh, uh, this one is geared uh, through schools and education and for younger people as well. So I cut out all the politics and the, the controversy because basically language is, a, is something that everybody can learn from, and and, and it. And re- achieve their f- true potential. So I've cut out all the politics and the controversy, and uh, we've looked and put in a. Actually, there's a side as well because basically the people in, su- in in power they learn grammar, and we've been dis- denied this opportunity to learn grammar. So basically, I've included um, the Latin and Greek sounds in in the common words that we have, and it's not really a book. I'd say it's a study. It's a it's a study. So basically, this is what you would use, you know, alongside a dictionary, alongside a Latin book, or anytime you're puzzled with a word, it's it's a book that you would get and start to see the sounds in the words. Yes. Yeah, so is it like a complement to to other books or, or, or right. le- le- learning materials that that you would be using? It's not a standalone yeah. read. No. Or, or it, you might have a special interest in, in wanting to know about language and words. Perhaps you, you can read it. You can read it. You can read it. Well, it has it has actually got another dimension to it uh, as well as being a study book. It's also a, a personal development book. Mm-hmm because uh, I've, I've, I've taken a take on the hieroglyphs. So basically, uh, it, it, the hieroglyphs, um, it was a way of perfect action and perfect thought. So when you look at the hieroglyphs and study the actual pictures on the hieroglyph, uh, it will enable you to uh, improve your, your your action, your course of action and clear your thinking as well. Just, just by looking at that, studying the letters of A, B, C, D, 
or in this book you you will improve your life also it's got um, the hebrew as well it's got the hebrew alphabet in the back of the book as well so when you put the he the hebrew the phoenician and the hieroglyph uh, uh, together you can see that it was more than just uh, writing a commerce it was actual a way of using your mind to, to in, a, in, a, in a higher way as well as your body actually. yeah you listen to the 100 percent spa show on slrradio.co.uk we have chambers in the studio this evening um talking words etymology do 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 roots the roots of words so if you want to uh, ask them any questions any tough questions i would prefer um the number is 07984 and, and you can answer question from jammers i think we we've got a uh, a text uh, we just um came in the studio um right let's let's it's pretty long text here. it says all right let's see what it takes here all right we seem to be having a little bit of um right we've got a text here some person of very um obviously um enthused uh, um to respond to to the questionnaire I'm just going to read uh, some of the uh, person not necessarily agreeing with, with everything that uh, is being said here. Um, they said that um, they said they're getting upset with all the um, foolishness that our people are, are, are more talking and, and have been talking and have been talking at the hands of racists. Yes, we have we have to set up our own enterprises, laws, but how can we do this on the white man's land without ruling it? Surely. We need to go back to Africa, and that's coming from 106, having some very um, interesting Fantastic. views there. How are we going to get all the money to get everybody, <laughs> ship everybody? We, so, have, we don't even control the boats, much less the planes. So, well, so I how think, are we going to get all the money together, you know, and, and ship everybody? Oh, really fantastic, that is, that comment, fantastic. Well, well I think that... Mind bit, blowing. Well, this was a thing, well, you know, we fed up with us t- talking, um, as they say, foolishness all the time, and uh, about waste this and waste that and then how can we change the, the laws and uh, and thing and, and without actually ruling it um, by your own um, admission uh, and that when they set the rules or whatever they, they normally own it so do you think that for it to be effective here would we have to own the land well uh, to have that basi- effect basically if you look at a cat and a dog yeah both of them are in captivity the dog responds to every sound that the master makes and it gets right. beaten left right and center the cat, one of the smart animals like the cat, that doesn't respond to these sounds, and and this is the way forward for us. We've got to stop responding and jumping when they say jump. So you know we have to start standing up for ourselves, like what the Jews do, like what the Asians do. You know they they don't. You know you don't get. They don't really mess with these communities because when the communities come together and stand with a solid force, you know they get treated with respect. Even if you look at uh, Germany and look uh, and you look at the China, both of them left, lost the war. You know they built themselves back up. You don't need to have. Uh, you don't need these people once you have respect all you need is respect of yourself when you've got respect of yourself other people will be forced to respect you so the reason why we're in this predicament is because we're jumping when the master says jump we're moving when the master says move and we we are financing all of their businesses left right and center eating their junk food buying their cheap designer clothes you know but and i remember designer when you're walking around with designer clothes that's why you're walking around with a closed mind right oh poetically said but do you think that that the the texter um cb who initialed the text cb do you think that that that, that the texter has got a point i uh, um, in terms of uh, of ownership because it's surely uh, um if, if if we want to to change things here to the laws should we own the land don't you think do you think that the, that the text has a point in terms of, of effectiveness well basically no? the land is there for everybody and when you're talking about ownership that's how they got in power the owner of the ship so okay. basically that's their method of getting in power you know is, is by taking what they haven't got we have got every as i said we are financing every business look at it just look at the hair sh- the hair industry is financed by us 
you know adidas we're financing all the shoes so basically we are financing all of what is going on right now so all we've got to do is take back and start investing in our own and by investing in our own we will achieve ownership by owning and investing in our own so don't be a left alone and try to run and go a bone or you know putting an afro comb in your head trying to ship everybody over to a land over there because you have not the finances we own this land anyway they don't even call themselves you know that natives here you know they call them themselves English. English is a German, so they're saying they're German. That's why they, when they, you come over there, they call you an illegal alien because they are the legal aliens. An yeah. alien is somebody who comes somewhere else and takes their things and uses it as their own. Yeah, we're gonna take this call. Hello, good evening. Is it Brother Dougie again? Yes. Um, as we think about land and you think about the um, the storm and etc. I wonder if James can break down the other thing about the, the world of the other thing about storm because it kind of ties in when we talk about the other thing about land. You know, because James done a lot of work in that particular area there. So yeah. I think it'll be quite interesting for many people listening right now how he breaks that down. Right. So, because thank you very much, brother Dougie. I've been asking to ask Doug Dougie some serious questions, and that is a very serious one. <laughs> Fire thank you very much, um, brother Dougie, for, um, for for raising the standard of questions here this evening. It's so basically right. Um, as as me and th- as we was all saying before, it's false. This this everything that they've done here is false. They've stolen the language. They've stolen our identity. They've stolen. Uh, our possessions it's a false sense of power by just saying a sound you know just like a dog you know we jump into these sounds like they have power over the way we respond so basically the straw man is another dimension of falsehood where where they've created an artificial identity of yourself and using uh, legalese to trick us into giving away more money and more possessions and our identity so the straw man basically is another example of that where you know you get a birth certificate it's all based on maritime law where you get birth certificate and the birth certificate has capital letters relating to a dead person based on when they lost run out of money during the war they they claimed everybody was dead and and now they we are now the, the goal that they use to finance the country so basically the straw man is another way that they can manipulate us you know with the trick of wordology into giving our way our land possession and identity right so Dougie, i hope that's um satisfy uh, it was a satisfactory answer there uh, um in terms of the straw man and Dr- and jammer's um linguistic uh take on the situation so you seem to think that that it is all hidden in the language there that we need no, to change actually real power we want real real power instead of this black friday whatever stop buying just have a let's have a, a friday what's more for it stop buying have a friday where we're just buying black 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 goods from black shops even though i don't like the word black you know but anyway we should just it, stop putting our money giving our money away if you look at the the jewish community see how how many times the money circulates before it leaves the community you know mother, other societies the chinese it, it circulates 10 15 times over 80 percent but, but, but our, our, we don't even see the money before it comes in our hand we don't even get a chance to hold the money for five seconds i, I think i think it's about what it is about 89 percent i think that, that, that it goes out the other way around um it stays in our community it's the opposite so basically um, if you were in power we wouldn't be here now so it's a false sense of power they need us to to to, to make this system run in, in a certain way you know so basically we have power already we're just using it ineffectively yeah. going back to to to, to what the texas said um cb uh seems to be making um a, a point um about the land in itself and, and the question about shouldn't we then go back to up to Africa. Well, the thing, as I said, it's unrealistic. This is the problem we have. We've got these unrealistic dreams, you know. And you want to go in a dream boat, we'll go in a dream boat back because you know where you're going to spend all the money, as I said, to ship the whole of our community back to a land. You know, it's not going to happen. It's a dream. So let's have a reality real and quite ownership here. You know, we, we can't we'll claim here. We reclaim. We, we, we're human beings. We've got the rights to do what we have to do. So basically, as I said, we, we can own the money that we have basically by keeping it amongst our own kind. So we can look how much the evidence is clear. Look at just look at um, the hair the hair industry. They look at look how big their shops are, and and now they have the power to send their their children to grammar school and become doctors. We finance that for other people. So why can't we just finance it for ourselves and claim real power, which we have anyway? Right now you're talking about weird power. Let's get into the 
words. You hear the words, man, tonight. So you talk about will, power. We've got will and power. Can you break down those two for me? Well, basically, see, it's beyond words, you know, because that's the problem. We, we have all these words like black, you know, feminism, you know, all of these words that we got around. And if you just look at diversity, all these words they've given us to play with. And when, <laughs> and when, you, look, when you look how effective we've been using these ineffective words, they've been in, we're, st- we're in a worse state than we was uh, in, in the past. If you look like, you know, Malcolm X, they, were, they, weren't, afri- they weren't afraid to go on national TV and say what their, their, their position. You know, you look at even Martin Luther King had a strategy. So basically, you know, Marcus Garvey had a strategy. We We've got clear people who have, who were in power in a so-called powerless position. If you look at the time of the depression, where like Marcus Garvey achieved what is, we're we're in a better position now to to do more than they have done. If we just if we just start to put into practice rather than just talking, because that's our problem. We're good talkers. Yeah, we've got a call on the line. Hello, good evening. Um, what do you want to contribute this evening? Good evening. Good evening. Is this brother James? It, yes. Do you want to contribute to the show this evening? Yes, this is Tyrone. Oh, so, okay, Shalom. How are you doing, sir? Yes, I'm well, brother. Yes, good. Brother Jammo's in there, too. Yes, we've got better Jammo than uh, better Theo in the studio. What's your, All right. Good. What's your contribution this evening? Yes, um, was just, uh, you know, think, look, listening in, and um, I have a question, of, and uh, maybe uh, to contribute quickly with, with that question, but just want to bounce it. With your both, right? Okay. What is the real meaning of community? What is community? I know we got the word, we can break down commune and unity, but what is a community? And um, well, I, I have my thoughts on this, feelings on this, but um, to put it to you both, because we talk about community and what we need to do for our community. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And again, it's like, do we really know what what it actually is? What a community really is? Yes. Because you got a neighborhood and you have a community. And usually a community, I would think, is that you got your own stores, your own banks, your own schools, your own hospitals, which is why your money would stay within a community that caters for the needs of everyone within that community, you see? Mm -hmm. And if you're not providing what the people within your community needs, then they're going to have to pay, spending money elsewhere where they can't get that provision to what they need. But tell me what you think. Okay, but Sam, um, Jamos, I'm going to defer to you first because uh, it is your area you're the words about I mean but Sam wants to know about community because we, we, we bounce this word around quite a lot community but, but, but what does it mean in essence Jammers well basically you see the problem with this we've been given that there's only one solution so when people are saying community they're, they're looking at to be one leader one way one purpose one goal when I don't like to use the word diversity we are people of different characters different you know different religions different ideals different identities so for me what we have to look at we have to have a common idea you know a common idea that overrides our differences and the idea would be i would say that we need to we do need to achieve some form of power some form of ownership we need to oh we haven't even got a school we own you know we haven't got a building even we own we don't even own toilet we can't even make toilet paper you know we don't own shoes so you know and if you look at everywhere else they're owning things so for me we need now it's it's we've got to look at ourselves this is like we're the endangered species that's the real reality of it if you look at every species of animal on this planet they all work together to try to survive and if you look now what's happening with all the machines and the robots they don't know we, they used to use us but now they're using us less because of the machines and that and when they use you less you become useless so basically we have to create our own wealth create our own identity have a common goal where we can start to put in our money together to start at least owning toilet paper 
<laughs> yes, yeah, my, my, my general idea of community uh, uh, is a group of people uh, using uh, their resources uh, uh, um, in, in all di all different levels uh, uh, um, to achieve things that benefit the entire community uh, or, or, or to benefit that group of people. And those resources, whether it's intelligence, whether it's businesses, whether it's land, whether it's ideas, but all those things are normally pull together collectively or, or, or sometimes individual um, can also you can also contribute to that very idea of what a community is as well so it's about the pooling of resources and ideas that benefits uh, that community also I'd just like to say it's a trick as well because basically they've taken all the money taken all the wealth taken all the possessions and now they want us to just come amongst ourselves when they've got the wealth so we need to, just like they do when they're trading, trading means really to raid. So when they come in with the, all their, their traders on, on our, uh, we should stop putting money in all the local shops that keep coming in our community, giving us junk food, junk clothes, and, and don't employ none of them in their sh our shops. It's now our time to just f do not put no money into someone who's not putting nothing towards you. And then the other thing is we need to have products like Dr. Dre. That is a mass market products that we're getting some of the money back that's been robbed, stolen, and taken from us by force. So the problem, the trick is that they want us to just have in our own little community is products for our own little communities when they come out of their communities to raid us to get wealth in so we need to start looking at that that scenario and start creating products where we're getting wealth in from the people who's taken the wealth from us in the first place so uh, Sam uh, uh, do you want to come back there or are you satisfied um, with those two answers well what I would say is that we put a lot of emotion into certain terminology and um, without having any real, um, I gotta say, positive directive power and clarity to the energy we put in these, some of these words. Because um, hearing both of you and there's other people will have their view of what a community is. And I said earlier that I would think that there's a difference between community and neighborhood, yeah? Mm -hmm. And um, to me, when you look at the word commune, community, you know, it's got common, commune, and unity in the phonetics. And what I would consider a real community would be when we talk about um, we don't spend our money with our own selves. Because if we're going to chat about community, we'd be specific to talking about a black community, right? Okay? And we're talking about on a physical level economic power, we're talking about land that we're going to want to create an infrastructure on a place that um, do we own it? And this whole idea of ownership, you know, is, 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 a, is a fallacy. But the thing is, is that a community for our, for us to say we have a community, not just a group of people gathering on certain occasions and we say this is the community. We all live in different neighborhoods, okay? That's, when we talk about a community, it would have their own schools, we would have our own uh, hospitals, we'd have our own grocers, we have our own stores that provides all the things that is needed to support and provide those things for everybody who then makes up that community, you know? Now, then your money is going to your own because you go. You want to go to the movies, you got your own movie house. You, you, you know, you want to go to the doctor, you go, go to your own doctor. You know what I'm saying? Lawyers, all of that, to me, is what makes up a community that expands itself. Now, if you don't have all of that stuff, how's your money going to be exchanged within your community enough time before it goes out inside of the community. Because it's, we don't have that infrastructure of what I would consider a community to be, a common unity, to build something on, we're all providing for each other based on the needs that is, is, is in demand. You understand? And therefore, our money, our economics would circulate amongst us. But it can't do it. It's like basically, early on, we're saying that we, as a 
as a people, we spend a lot of money that supports other people's enterprises, other people's things they're building up to, to have their own community and provide for their own folks. You see what I mean? Yes, yes. So it takes a lot we got to think about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we say community, we can get that mixed up with just a, oh, we all gather together, yes. right? In, um, in, in some building, an apartment, and we, we stay that we need to do this and that and we dress up these gongs and all of this and that and say yeah we're identifying with ourselves and then after that we go home to our own neighborhoods all right okay and you know i just feel that some of these things we really need to get clear upon in order for one to have clear direction one to be able to focus their energy yeah yes. on something that is clear and achievable, you see? But we put a lot of emotions in a lot of words that don't even, it doesn't even have the true meaning that it's supposed to represent for for you to kind of operate within that structure. Yeah. Anyway, it's just my thoughts, I just wanted to share and just, um, you know, add something there as well to add, you know, to yes, open up more questions and to go deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah thank you, Sayam. Um, yeah. What we call, what we call, what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, yeah. Sayam. Um, y- y- your contribution yeah. has been invaluable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much, James and um, James. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Take care and uh, great show. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. That's that's. Um, but a Siam there, um, contributing there, very, very good contribution there. Uh, I'm in terms yeah, I like to do of, of, of giving the the emotion and the power to a lot of words um, to which we don't necessarily bring a lot of reality. I, to. I, I like to do that because we're, we're basically running a talkathon, you know. Basically, yeah. we we talk out, we know every scripture, every quote that's been made by every person, every black leader, but we don't put one foot forward and actually turn it into action. The pla- the templates have been set there by by our past, but we we we're predominated with talking and that is being the big problem with our community we're talkers but it's it, if you look at people who've come off the boat or off the plane after us you can see they've set up shops they, you, you know there's, there's there's no big dynamic to all of this there's you know you can look at a corner shop you see someone who's been in the country two minutes they've got their shop they've got their cousins in the shop they've got six shops and i was talking to i think it was a turkish guy in the barbers and basically they, there's eight brothers they first had one shop now everybody's got a shop now all their cousins are in the shop and that's 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 how you're supposed to run it you know you're to run it create your own employment it's simple it's just that we're not putting at you know we're not putting talking into action and that's right no not putting talking action and i think it kind of a, ch- a time with what we what uh, uh siam said in terms of not um we give a lot of emotive um power to a lot of words and without reflecting on the reality in terms of what of what of what we do and what it really really really, really means uh we uh, you listen to the 100 percent spa show on slrradio.co you can tonight we have put DS Chadwick in the studio tonight um, the wordsmith the words man the linguistic man the etymology man that he's pretty much known for now uh, um, he's putting me out of work <laughs> um, you, you create the monster yeah absolutely so if you want to contribute to the show tonight 07984 just got some little giveaways because on the 100% Spar show we always uh, like to share some, something with our listeners who seem they're not going to get the chance to do that because we've got um, another Caller coming in the studio. Hello, good evening, 100% Spar Show. Good, e- good evening, DJ. Y- yeah, good what evening. Brian from Top Farm. I was just like to say about um, Simon, the American guy, just a minute ago. Oh, good yes, evening. you want to comment on what he said? Well, in, in general, about. Um, Cola, Cola, you, you, you seem to be have a very bad line there. We, we can't hear you. A lot of crackling sounds. So if you want to, either move away from the phone or. Can you hear me better now? Um, a little, little better, but 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 there's a there's, there's a quite a big echo in the background. Hello, can you? Is it better? That's much better now. Um, go right ahead. I said go right ahead. Go what? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Y- yes, go right ahead now. Go ahead. You see, you're talking about community, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, like, earlier on you were talking about the, the repealing of the race, some of the race laws in this country and everything. Mm-hmm. Now, to me, 
they could like they could put it both ways if they want to, yeah. They could say we don't need them no more because black people have been integrated into society and we've got the uh, like the anti hate laws, the ones we've done in all the time. But it looks like to me, what it's basically saying it's not even a it's not even a black thing no more, yeah. That it's them against us, i.e. the rich against the poor. Right. And and if you look at it, the majority of, like, say, people of colour, black, or white, Asian, whatever, are generally in, like, the, mind, like, the, the poor part of society, yeah? And they, they're stitching us all up now. It's not just, like, when we just, when, they, when she was talking about the stopping system, yeah, that the proportion, but what they're not really saying is that they're doing more stop and searches in that on white people, but in the poorer areas, it's, it's not happening to the rich people. The only people that are really getting targeted here, be they black or white, is the poor people. Right. So, Carlos. So, sorry to cut you. So, what you're saying that it's not an issue in terms of the the stop and search. It's not necessarily an issue of race, but it seems to be more to do with maybe class and and who's rich and who's poor. Yeah. When I was young. You used to see the stop and searches and all that, yeah? You could see it was blatant. It was like blatantly racially targeted. Now, it's, they're not just like in my area, for example, they're not just targeting young black guys, but they're also targeting like the council estate, what you would call tabs and all of that, yeah? All right? so, and basically, it's just to keep an eye on them and to keep them down. Yeah? And people like, what I'm, what I'm hoping for, yeah? Because we can't, if we as, like, as a black community can't seem to do it amongst ourselves, yeah? Mm-hmm. Like, stand up and fight for us, like, and basically be true to each other, like, you're talking about why are you going to go and buy your stuff from Mr. Patel when you're going buy it from Herman's on the corner there, you know what I mean? Yeah? Uh, okay. Like, if you can't do that, yeah. Then, yeah. Like, we need to come together and be black, white, but, but basically, the Okay, caller, we 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 really um we really trapped for time, and you make some pretty valuable points. Then we're going to comment on them, but we really really um stretched for time. Um, just thank you for your contribution. You've made some really good points there. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Yeah, yes, the, yeah. The caller there was, was saying that it's more to do with now rather than race in itself is more to do with, with class and rich and poor and, and who's got money and, and who hasn't. So it's not just the, the case that uh, black people are being searched, but it's more people who live in poor areas or council estates. That seems to be the the uh, um, um, the case, the point he's making. It's little to do with race anymore. Well, I think it's that more is to do with poverty and who's poor who live in those areas. That is a clear point because it is all, it was also, as I said, we've been saying it's about land, possession and identity so that was a misdirection talking about the colour and the racism thing that's a misdirection by them when they're really after your land, possession yeah. and identity yeah, I mean, we've got some, t- I know time is really short but I've got some got some community announcements to make but I've also got some tickets to give away uh, you can, um, it's it's about it's Freddie's Melody, one of our own DJs here is, is having his, um, his birthday party on Saturday the 19th uh, of August at Excel House um, 3112 Tottenham High Road uh, tickets are £10 but but I'm giving away two for tonight on the show so if you we want to uh, be there uh, you can just just take the studio um, even if I receive the text after the show is finished I, I will be contacting you but yeah, you can text on 079 
double eight and you can just tell me where is the party taking place and you'll have yourself one of these tickets. I've also got uh, some more community news uh, coming up. We've got the live link up cultural festival um, is coming up on the 26th of uh, August 2017 at the West Indian Cultural Centre, Clarendon Road, Hornsey, London N8. And it's going to be a day and night event. It's from 1pm on Saturday to 3pm. There will be some entertainers there. There will be Claire Angel, Tanish Star, Shanti Force, Ras Van. And there's quite a, a lot of other activities there. Um, Fat Man Song um, um, will be playing there as well as your international. There's a lot. There will be guest speakers there, herbal practitioners. And it will be going to be very, very, very good. It's going to be just um, £5. The tickets are limited. So, so if you want to... Avail of 7107898436697 or 07377700901. That is the Entertainment Link Up Cultural Fest, which takes place on the 26th of August. Shall be giving you some more information on that. We still have some more, uh, another community announcement, and this is the uh, High Cross United Reformed Church Holiday Club and it starts from Monday the 21st to Friday the 28th 2017 and it's all about me and it takes place at the United Reformed Church there in High Cross. If you wanted to join and become part of this holiday club you can call 07956 822 735 or you can call the office on 0208 801 9887 this is if you want to be part of the united reformed church they're having the hollow club 2017 it's take place from monday the 21st to friday the 25th of august 2017 and uh, just gonna get our, our uh, studio guests to say their final goodbye Chambers, uh, just to wind up, just thank you for coming into the studio, you always make it interesting as usual Alright, i just make one word for the community the word parking ticket parking actually means when you're moving <laughs> when you're parking that means you're moving so how can you pay a parking ticket so anybody who's got a parking ticket park, just a, parking means when you're moving so don't pay in a parking ticket <laughs> Uh, Theo, you want to come in? <laughs> Quite an interesting check there, Jammers, again. Um, <laughs> do you want to come in there, Theo? Uh, so, that's community now. We've become part that, of this. Well, I mean, I was interested in that last point, so I'm going to make this one really quick. I was thinking about, you see, look, what people don't understand about racism is it's about empire. You see? An empire functions like a business. And when a business downsize, downsizes, in order to escape, stay competitive, it often clears house at the lowest rungs of the business first. Yeah. So it's going to take losses that are going to hit both us and the so-called Europeans. Yeah. So it's going to appear as though people are, are being affected almost like along the same kind of lines. And that's going to distract people from the wider issues in terms of how empire functions it's been a great evening having jammers here so I, I won't keep you i won't keep any longer that was my last little contribution there to that yeah, I was uh, always okay <laughs> never enough time in the day never enough time in the day when when jammers are uh, is around because um, he always makes the show quite interesting just to say that we've got uh, uh, one winner for that ticket 694 um, for one of the tickets yes it's taking place at Excel House um, where I shall be contacting you after the show if anyone still wants to win they can still even text in afterwards and I will take your details and get that ticket to you so congratulations I just want to thank everyone all the listeners all the silent listeners who um, uh, listen to 100% Spar Show also to all those who continue to listen and support the show up next is Gospel Time with Pastor Michael Lewis and Corinne. So again, thank you for joining us on the 100% Spa Show on slrradio.co.uk. Join us the same time next week. Whatever you do, have a great week.